In this video, we're looking at the best mods to release relatively recently. We won't waste any time and start with the brand new Izmir armor by Fourth Unknown, which adds a set of unique, heavy ancient Nord armor and a battle axe to Skyrim. There's not really a lot I can think to say about it. It's big, fantastic looking, and fits very well into Skyrim as it's clearly inspired by the game's lore and designed to fit seamlessly into the existing game world. You can find the cuirass at the throat of the world, the boots at the foot of High Hrothgar, the helmet within Ustengrav, and the gauntlets are at the end of Bleak Falls Barrow. To make the armor even better, I'd get some of X Tudor's add ons, which offer further customization and integration options. These add ons include the option to have the armor replace iron armor, steel armor, or ancient Nordic armor, if you want to integrate it more seamlessly into the vanilla game, or you can even have it replace the uniquely enchanted Azadol's armor, which is what I'd personally go with just to make the armor more unique. There's also the option to have the armor worn by special characters like Ysgamor, Kodlak Whitemane, Vilkus and Farkas, and Hrongar to make the armor look all the more legendary. And instead of just finding the armor in random places throughout the game world, there's the option to have the armor and its accompanying battle axe to be discovered as part of the Companions quest line, which just makes it a slightly more rewarding experience for players who want to invest their time into the Companions. All in all, the Izmir armor, with all its add-ons and enhancements, is a mod I'd recommend very much. Vibrant Weapons is a Skyrim mod that enhances the game's visuals, specifically focusing on weapon enchantments. It adds detailed particle effects to weapons enchanted with fire, frost or shock damage, and the effects warp to change to match the type of weapon you're using. Though if you have a weapon that combines these enchantments, like fire and frost together, the mod gives it a unique visual blend where you can see both at once, making it look even cooler. The mod tries to make the effect fit every weapon's design, but there's a limit to how well this can look, depending on the weapon's shape. Now some of you who are active on the Nexus might be thinking, well, this isn't a new mod at all, and you'd be right. The mod is actually a remake of an older one using a new framework, which allows for these cool effects to be added without slowing down the game with script lag. It's a more stable and efficient way to make the weapons in Skyrim look more magical and more visually interesting. However, as I said, the mod isn't perfect and has its limitations. Since the effects are designed to fit the weapon type rather than its exact shape, weapons with odd or untraditional shapes might not look great with these effects. Though despite this, I still think the mod is a big step up from what Vanilla did with enchanted weapons. For our next great addition, we have a very fitting sponsored segment from Boot.dev. Boot.dev's goal is to teach you programming in a fun way, as it isn't just about reading or watching, it's about actually doing. You'll get to learn back-end web development in Python and Go from start to finish in a very unique way. Boot.dev is basically like a programming RPG, as our approach to learning is simple, avoid boredom at all costs through making your learning journey more fun and engaging. As you complete programming exercises and learn, you get XP rewards, level ups, and more programming quests to embark on. And the platform is very straightforward, you basically just make an account and get access to a huge amount of content, all focused on getting you on your keyboard writing code. Also, there's absolutely no risk, as they never want a student feeling like they've spent money on something that isn't helping them. So there's a 30-day no-questions-asked refund policy, as well as a free demo of every course and its interactive features. You get to craft your skills from the ground up in an online, self-paced environment that feels like you're playing an RPG. I mean, as you can tell, this isn't just another coding course, it's a fun way to learn an actually valuable skill. So for those interested in starting their programming journey, they're offering a special discount, as if you use my code redshift linked in the description, you get 25% off your first payment. That's 25% off either a monthly or yearly subscription. And now for our next mod. The follower dialogue expansion for Ayla the Huntress adds a lot to Ayla's character in Skyrim. It gives her about 200 more things to say, all voiced with AI to match the game's style. These new lines cover a bunch of different topics that you'll hear often if you use her as your follower, like how Ayla talks more about what's going on in the Companions questline, the main game story, and the DLCs. I hope the dragons don't cower away just because you've beaten their master. I still haven't hunted enough yet. Which just makes her seem more in tune with the game and what's actually going on around her. And there are now also fresh conversations that let you dive deeper into her story. You can learn more about her background, like her mother who is also a companion, and if you marry Ayla, she has special lines for you, making the relationship feel slightly more important and relevant. Let's go, my beloved. The hunt awaits. And as you travel around Skyrim with Ayla, she can now make remarks about the different places you visit, from cities to dungeons, which helps to make her feel more present in the game. I've heard tales of Morrowind and its strange creatures. I'll enjoy the chance to hunt them. And everything fits within the game's original lore. The mod doesn't change Ayla's character, but expands it in a way that makes sense in Skyrim's world. The mod is designed to work with any other mod, even other dialogue expansions. And it's also safe to add to your game, even if you're already halfway through a playthrough. I mean, obviously this mod is great for anyone who likes having Ayla around, whether as a spouse or follower. It makes her more interesting and interactive, though the only gripe you can have with the mod is that it uses AI to voice the new lines. So if you're particularly against AI voicing, I suppose you could stay away from this mod. 
the Relentless is a mod that introduces a new sword called Relentless into Skyrim. It's a very sleek and stylish sword, and the mod offers two versions. One is a one-handed sword that does 11 damage, and the other is a two-handed sword that does 20 for a little more power. Both versions of the sword are as strong as ebony tier weapons, and the weapon itself comes in 1k, 2k, and 4k resolutions, allowing players with different system capabilities to enjoy it, though I'd recommend most of you get the 2k version, though 1k honestly works fine as well. To get the Relentless sword in game, you'll need to craft it at the Skyforge. Additionally, the mod also includes special versions of the sword with fire and ice runes overlaid on top of it that glow and blink in the dark, which makes it look even cooler and more unique. And according to the mod page, there's an update plan to add a voice quest for obtaining the sword to enhance the narrative aspect of acquiring the weapon. Modular SMP hairstyles is a great addition for Skyrim players looking for far more character customization. How the mod works is that you can mix and match from 12 different base hairstyles and 12 kind of mini hairstyles, making it super versatile for both human and elven characters as it gives you a lot more customization options without being overwhelming. I mean, as you can see, the hairstyles look great with high poly meshes and high resolution textures. And on top of that, the hair actually moves thanks to HDT SMP. These hairstyles will actually react to your character's movements, adding a little bit of realism without completely bogging down the game's performance. All the new hairstyles have been lumped into the existing hair slider in the character creation screen, which just helps to keep things more simple and integrated into the base game. However, there might be a bit of floating hair near the forehead or some clipping with certain ear shapes. Though the more also try to minimize these glitches, especially across different races, though for the most part all the hairs work perfectly fine. It's also ESL flagged, meaning it's lightweight, and doesn't count towards Skyrim's mod limit. Now for Jay Surfer's latest mod, we have NPCs Take Cover. This mod is especially for the sneak archers. As I'm sure you've noticed, as if you're standing on a cliff or ledge that NPCs can't climb, they just stare up and look at you cluelessly as you rain arrows down on them, which isn't exactly the pinnacle of challenging gameplay. This mod is here to fix that. Instead of the NPCs just standing around brainlessly while you rain arrows or spells on them, they now know how to duck for cover. And this doesn't mean just stepping behind the nearest tree. The NPCs are actively trying to break your line of sight, making it seem like they're actually trying to avoid your hits as they'll move more unpredictably as well. And because this mod is great, the NPCs will call you out on your cowardly sneak archery with over 200 voice reactions. Grimoire would be ashamed of you. So it's not just about making the NPCs harder to beat, it's about making combat feel more alive and interactive and slightly more personal. Though while it's true the mod is basically built for those who engage in rage combat, the overall improvement to NPC intelligence can still add a layer of depth and realism to your game, making it worth considering for any playstyle. The Unmarked Locations Pack Solstheim is a mod designed for Skyrim players who love exploring and finding new places. It adds more than 15 unmarked locations to Solstheim, which is already a familiar place for players, but now it has more secrets to discover. Each location has something unique, like special loot, interactions, or enemies. Plus, for fans of Morrowind, this mod brings back locations from the Blood Moon DLC, adding a touch of nostalgia. For example, there's Uncle Sweetshare's Workshop, which is placed about where it was in Morrowind. Or an example of another location is the new Old Well near the Skull Village. It's just a really simple mod. Mod that adds more to your exploration around a place you've probably been to hundreds of times. Now this mod is another in the follower dialogue expansion series, but this one covers Brilina Marion, one of the novice mages found in the College of Winterhold who can be your follower and spouse. The mod is designed to add depth to Brilina as it adds over 154 new lines for her. Just because I come from House Telvanni doesn't automatically make me a prodigy. I wish my parents understood that. And like the mod for Ayla, it's all voice using high quality AI generated lines, which just makes her interactions richer and more varied as she now reacts to the player's progress and key quests, mainly including the College of Winterhold storyline and the game's main quest. I've never heard of this Mirak before his people attacked you. Be careful, all right? And if you marry Brilena, she gets some new lines, making the marriage feel more significant. And like Ayla, she comments in different places you visit together, making her feel more like a real companion in your travels. And again, the mod keeps everything within the game's lore, meaning it expands on Brilena's character without changing her base personality or story. You can add this mod to your game at any point, even if you've already completed the College of Winterhold quests or already recruited Brilena as your follower. You might miss out on a few of the specific comments about the College's questline, but everything else will work as intended. In essence, the mod makes her a more complex character and a very unintrusive way. Now the Savior's Hide Replacer does exactly what you'd expect. It replaces the Savior's Hide to look more imposing as it gives it a dark colour scheme and covers up more of the exposed body so your character doesn't need to freeze to death to wear good armour. The mod also comes with some matching boots, gauntlets and a helmet to complete a full set. A really simple mod to make the Savior's Hide look less lame. Now Unmasking Sabeel is a Skyrim mod focused on exploring the story of Sabeel Stentor, Solitude's court wizard who is actually a vampire. In the base game it's clear as day that Sabeel is a vampire. Aside from her glowing eyes, she sleeps throughout the 
day and wakes up at night, and she's been the court wizard for at least 30 years and hasn't aged a day. And according to Solitude's executioner, she regularly feeds on the inmates in Solitude's prison. The mod changes the helplessness of the situation by introducing a quest where you can investigate Sibyl's actions and decide her fate. You get to dig into her activities around Solitude, finding evidence and learning more about her. And you're not just being told what's happening, you're actively uncovering the truth. It uses Sibyl's original voice lines from Skyrim, slightly edited to fit the new dialogue, to make it feel like it was part of the original game. The mod asks you to make a decision about her fate based on what you discover. You can keep her secret, confront her, report her, or eliminate her yourself. Each choice affects your relationship with her and comes with specific rewards. You can begin the quest by talking to Melorin the wizard or Odar the cook, or by finding evidence of Sibyl's misdeeds around Solitude. It's designed to feel natural, like stumbling upon a secret. Just to reiterate, the mod doesn't use AI for its dialogue or content creation, it's all handcrafted, relying on existing game assets and smart editing of the voice lines. And to play the mod, there's no need to start a new game. The mod is designed to fit seamlessly into your existing Skyrim playthrough, regardless of your progress. All in all, Unmasking Sabeel adds depth to a character that's intriguing, but a bit underexplored. Dialogue expansion Windhelm introduces over 700 new lines of dialogue, crafted to fit in seamlessly with Windhelm's slightly more oppressive environment. As in all, it enhances the depth of about 30 NPCs. The mod's overarching goal is to counteract the overly friendly demeanor of Windhelm's NPCs. Looking for a bowl of milk? Get out of my face. And what I particularly like, or find more interesting, is the mod's focus on racial tensions within Windhelm, a city known for its discrimination against elves, beast races, and other non-Nordic races. The mod not only acknowledges these prejudices, but amplifies them in the dialogue of many NPCs, making the city's atmosphere feel more authentic to the lore, and at times, oppressively hostile, which I found to be a bit like Morrowind. So that's design. not just an especially furry rug over your shoulders. You're actually a Khajiit. The guards are slacking off. In addition to the dialogue enhancements, the mod introduces 30 new NPC to NPC interaction scenes, and these scenes are distributed across various locations within Windhelm, such as the Candle Hearth Hall, the Marketplace, the New Nissus Corner Club, and the Docks, making the city's daily bustle slightly more interesting. And the inclusion of these scenes, some of which are contingent on the player's actions, further cements the fact that you're living in a dynamic world. Now, the mod utilizes Eleven Labs for the AI voice work, ensuring that the new dialogue blends well with the existing game audio, which I know some people take issue with, but it does make it sound great. Furthermore, it's packaged as an ESL file, which means it doesn't take up a slot in your load order. The main point of this mod is to dial back on the niceness of Windhelm's NPCs, as the original game made everyone a bit too friendly, especially considering it's the hub for the Stormcloaks. Now for a very small but very cool mod, we have the Falmer dialogue overhaul. The Falmer, a once proud and noble race, have degenerated into blind, subterranean dwellers as a mere shadow of their former selves. The Falmer dialogue overhaul changes how the Falmer and game communicate. Instead of using the typical sounds like grunts, the mod introduces echolocation sounds such as clicks and taps. This method mimics how some animals navigate and communicate, making the farmer sound like they're using their echoes to see the environment. You'll now hear just idle clicks with servers' background ambience, alert noises that indicate the detection of an enemy, aggressive sounds accompanying the discovery of an enemy, and taunts as the farmer communicate between each other. The primary aim of this mod is to create a more immersive and terrifying experience for players as they navigate the ancient Dwemer ruins and other habitats of the Falmer. The Piercing Spells mod for Skyrim revamps the expert level destruction spells, making them pierce through multiple enemies. This means spells like Incineration or Icy Spear can now hit several targets in a line, which just makes them more fun. Though additionally, the mod updates the visuals for these spells, giving them new effects that better match their enhanced capabilities. Though beyond the updated visuals and new piercing effect, the Thunderbolt spell has been transformed into Lightning Stream, which changes it from a single shot spell to a continuous beam, which not only looks cooler, but also helps to differentiate it from the other two spells, so they're not all identical. Identical. And that's all the mods we're covering today. Don't forget to endorse the mod you enjoy, and if you want more mods, you can check out this video of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like. Thanks for watching.